Greetings everyone, my name is Ettervale, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Cathedral. Continuing on from the last episode, I'll now be entering the Bone Church, in search for the second orb left by Ardur. Off screen, I decided to bank all my extra gold. As always, for full disclosure, I received the key from the developers in order to let's play this title. Looks like this dungeon has a bunch of these doors. And there's the map. That was pretty easy to find. Fairly sizable location. Let's see how it compares with a Necromancer's Den. going to have to locate a bone key then. I guess this leads over to the final area of this church. Now let's see what's behind this door. A looping room structure. Let's start off by going to the right. I knew that was gonna happen at least once. I got overwhelmed by those enemies. I do want that treasure chest, so I'll go for it again. I'll try at the very least. At the very least, I can one-shot these enemies now. Only problem is that there's now another one of them. Even trying to downstab them to that is a risky proposition. Plus, I can't see in advance where it'll drop from. And I should have remembered to use potions earlier.
I knew there was something there. Something was sticking out. Oh goody, I suppose I can't block the fireballs either. They are kind of like the fireways from Fireman stage in Mega Man 1. Now that I think about it, as long as I stand still, they'll jump over me. There's the bone key. I'm gonna have to get that from the other side though. Finding those enemies in close quarters, that's a risky proposition. Now I just need to do this in reverse. I can access the lower parts of the Bone Church. So I can block the fireballs with my shield. Playing it slow and steady. Ah, glitter is something here. So perhaps a hidden pathway? Yeah, there it is. Sneaky.
Now let's get out of this place and move on to the next area. I'm gonna first see what's to the right before returning back down to the basement. The main danger of those undead gold men is how fast they come running at you, because otherwise you can one-shot them. Well, that's new. Those jumping skeleton enemies are easily the most dangerous enemies in this stage. But if you can position yourself carefully, they're not too bad. Because then they'll just easily jump over you. I'm curious, what's down here? Just an acid pit. This is where all the arrow upgrades come in handy. Oh wait a minute, I have soul. I can probably activate it that way. I hesitated too long for there. So far this dungeon has been easier to navigate compared to the Necromancer's Den. Then again, that's because I'm not looking out for a certain ability or four items necessary to unlock the boss. I wanted to recharge my health bottles anyways, so I'm okay. The gold cost is negligible. I mean, that's why I banked all my gold into town.
Well, I guess this is one way. Skeleton Wand. A mysterious wand shaped as a bone. Spawn a bone and use as a moving platform. So that's the next major item in the game. Let's try it out. Oh, wait, wait. Of course, it wouldn't be that easy. It was just a survival room, nothing more. You know, once I activate it, it acts like the rush jet. Though it doesn't last infinitely like the rush jet, it will disappear after a short while has passed. Probably a fake platform. One way only. And I see the two exits out of this room. One at the top and one at the bottom. One of which in the town, one of which in the graveyard, one of which in the forest, one of which in Poison Pavilion, and one of which in a Necromancer's Den. Just one room apiece though. I'm probably going to reserve one episode where I explore the rest of the world. Explore all the places I wasn't able to access before, due to lacking the items necessary. I can only use a skeleton wand at ground level though. It even acts like a solid object for enemies to stand on top of. And when I say solid ground, that doesn't include the bone itself. Once I get back to the town, I'll purchase the bottle upgrade.
fairly straightforward puzzle. The question is, will I be able to get back there alive? Yep, it opened the gate. And that's my ticket out of here. In case I want to use it. But I won't leave to the town just yet. Apparently, if you shoot the jumping skeletons with an arrow, their lower parts will get immediately destroyed, making them a lot easier to manage. Oh goody, a room filled with them. To be honest, that wasn't too bad. Ami took two hits. And that's my shortcut back. I'm getting fairly close to the boss, which is probably over here. Not good. Oh, where's the health restoration station? I'm gonna have to visit the right side too, aren't I? 
Let's check out the right side now. I'm gonna have to check out the lower left side too. Good advice. Even before I fall into the slime. Clearly there's something up there, but... I'll just take the lower out first. Gonna be one of these challenges, I see. Well, at least I have infinite health restores. And that takes care of that one, but there are two left to go. Hang on, can you follow me, Skeletor Head? Yeah, there is something up there. It says rest under the spikes, but there is a hole over there in between the spikes. Here's an invisible platform. I was gonna try bouncing up using the Skeletor Head, but that wasn't necessary. I'll meet you back at the left side. Back at the left side. And just like with the rest of this LP, this will be edited down in post.
And that should be the last of the four switches. Time to descend further downwards. We're almost there at the boss. I can feel it. And there's our next heart container. I was expecting the challenge again to be much harder, but no, just behind a fake wall. A sarcophagus. Here it comes. And our boss is Salimache, the Crypt Guardian. So his head is the weak point. Honestly, thought his staff damaged me, but no, it doesn't. That's why I didn't want to get close to him earlier. Alright, phase two. The Donmaku phase. Phase 3. Summons all these skeletons while firing fireballs at me. I think the Don Mako phase was more dangerous. This is problematic. Of course, now that's dealt with, not so much. Again? You're not giving as much time for me to attack you. He's playing much more aggressive now. Well, there goes most of the floor then. He has a separate health bar now. Oh no. It's over, that was a bit of a close one. I was left with half a heart left and no health bottles. And there's the Orb of Salamence, a purple orb humming with undead spirit energy. And I didn't expect his head to split off like that. So overall, the Bowen Church was fun to go through. However, it felt more linear compared to the Necromancer's Den. That's probably because we don't need to collect four items, and the stage's layout feels more segmented. Nevertheless, it made up for that fact by generally being more difficult.
So in the next episode, I'll be exploring the next area, which is located directly right of here. Well then, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Toodles!